Nasal bleeding or nose bleeding is a common phenomenon not just in adults even in children. Some have it when they lift weights, some have it when they start crying, some get nasal bleeding when they go out in the heat and come back and some continually frequently have nasal bleeding without understanding what is the real cause for it. So today we will understand some science about nasal bleeding, what are the causes, what are some natural treatments and what are the wrong treatments or myths that we have been following for generations altogether to stop nasal bleeding. Let's begin. Vitamin K1 is responsible for a lot of clotting functions into your body. But if somebody is deficient in vitamin K1, that may be a possibility that the clotting function of the blood is not taking place and hence you are having continuous nasal bleeding. Now this can be easily stopped by increasing vegetables into your diet because it is this vegetables that will give you vitamin K1. Your liver also has a lot of clotting functions to do. So in case somebody has a damaged liver or a fatty liver or a liver syrup that can also be a contributing factor to reduce the clotting function and hence the bleeding shall continue. Liver makes bile for you which is stored in the gallbladder for which you need a healthy liver and you should have a healthy gallbladder. So if there are certain people who have surgically removed their gallbladder because of stones or other complications, they may have an increased instance of nasal bleeding. It is possible for those people who have low plate count. It could be because of leukemia or it could be anemia or it could be low iron or it could be low B12 or it could be liver cirrhosis, any damage to the liver, fatty liver etc. or it could even be chemotherapy. Any of the reasons if some people even virus like a dengue fever, if somebody has low platelets that can reduce the clotting function and hence your nasal bleeding shall continue. Check your medications. So if somebody is used to certain blood thinning medications like your warfarin or it could be over-the-counter aspirin, ecosprin etc. These may lead to nasal bleeding because it has a blood thinning function. Sinuses can be another contributing factor. So any allergy, any infection or any viral infection that may come into you leading to irritation of your mucosal membranes may lead to nasal bleeding. High BP is said to have a direct correlation with your nasal bleeding. So high BP puts a lot of strain on your blood vessels and there are a lot of fragile capillaries in the sinus region and in case you have a high blood pressure it may put strain on these fragile capillaries leading to nasal bleeding. It is said that certain addictions like cocaine etc may also lead to nasal bleedings or cancer wherein your platelets anyways go down the clotting function reduces and can lead to nasal bleeding. A lot of dry fruits etc today are packed with sulphite based preservatives and these sulphite based preservatives are known to cause nasal bleeding. So in case you have your prunes and your apricots and your raisins etc packed with preservatives then you need to keep a check on that because it causes irritation in your sinuses. A lot of glucose due to sugar or carbohydrate rich diet may compete with vitamin C when it comes to absorption on your insulin receptors. So in this condition there is a greater affinity to glucose and hence there is sort of this deficiency of vitamin C that is created and this may also continue your nasal bleeding. Sometimes it could just be a genetic disorder. There was this lady who usually used to get nasal bleeding since she was 13. Her father had the same problem and her grandfather had the same problem. So once while she was hiking she had this uh, nasal bleeding bleeding and along with that she also started getting giddiness or dizziness. When they did a CT scan of her lungs they figured out that there was an enlarged blood vessel. Now this enlarged blood vessel was stopping the normal flow towards the brain hence she was also getting dizziness. Now this is a genetic disorder and the symptom was some red spots on the lips and some red spots on her hands. Now she had to go through a surgical procedure. Genetic disorders can also be a reason why nasal bleeding continues. So what is it that you can do? Now there are many natural treatments but first and foremost it's important to understand what is it that we are doing wrong and let's correct it. Most common mistakes when people have nasal bleeding is that they start looking 
upwards when they start looking upwards they take their nose up in the assumption that this will stop the blood flow coming down this may prove very very fatal because when you start looking upwards there are chances that you may swallow your own blood there are chances that this blood goes into the wind pipe it enters your lungs and it can cause choking now there are chances that it may lead to nausea it may lead to vomiting as well and hence looking up when you are having nasal bleeding it's absolutely not a good idea the best idea is to lean forward and hold your nose in this softer area so as to stop and make sure that the blood clots naturally lean forward press it in the soft area for about 10 minutes till such time that you are holding it here breathe through your mouth and continue doing this for about 10 minutes if after 10 minutes also the bleeding does not stop you may want to continue it for another 5 minutes after which most likely the nasal bleeding stops but if it is still not stopping you may have to go into the emergency room or check with a hospital on a more regular basis it's a good idea to not blow your nose very very vigorously go slow understand that there are fragile capillaries there and do not blow hard it's also not a very good idea to peck your nose or put your finger inside your nose because that may again lead to irritation and hence cause nasal bleeding now people usually feel that if they hold it here on the upward area that will stop nasal bleeding but there are no capillaries that are leading to nasal bleeding out here the fragile capillaries are out here and hence the pressing has to be in the lower area not in the upper area secondly it's also a good idea that you keep some ice on the roof of your mouth because there are certain capillaries in the lower region if you get a sneeze and you want to not have a very vigorous blow it's a good idea to just hold here for some time and the sneeze will actually become a little reduced in case you are having any problem with nasal bleeding treat your constipation first in case you are constipated during the course of time when you are having nasal bleeding try and avoid lifting heavy weights over this entire period when you are trying to treat your nasal bleeding have only warm drinks hot drinks and do not have anything ice cold sometimes excess pollution or going out into dry areas may lead to certain dryness in your nose and this dryness can also irritate the fragile capillaries and lead to nasal bleeding what you could do is follow the process of nasyam as suggested in ayurveda so while sleeping one drop of ghee in one nostril one drop of ghee in another nostril is called the process of nasyam it will moisturize your nose and make sure that this nasal bleeding is not happening because of dryness if any i hope this has helped in understanding the science behind nasal bleeding and what are certain natural treatments that can cure it also i hope it has busted certain myths on what steps should we take immediately when the nasal bleeding occurs if you are liking my content please subscribe to the channel please comment and share your experiences i would love to hear from you till we come up with another video namaste see you again